Good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to the first networking and membership event of uh, the Punjabi Chambers of Commerce. Uh, before we start officially and formally with uh, Kaviraj, uh, I would uh, request Dr. Rashri Datta to introduce Punjabi Chambers of Commerce to all our guests and participants who are watching us live and on Zoom. Dr. Rashri Datta. Thank you, Ms. Pranthawa. Thank you so much. And uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning from India. I welcome all of you for this uh, very interesting uh, session and workshop that we are going to have in the next 10 minutes from now. So as I've been asked to introduce um, or talk a little bit about Punjabi Chamber of Commerce, while the screen has all the information that is required to be read by all of you, I would really uh, talk about what Punjabi Chamber of Commerce stands for. We stand for four C's. One C is definitely Punjabi Chamber of Commerce, stands for commerce and cooperation. The other is capacity building. The third is community building. And the fourth is culture building. So these are the three four C's that we would like to be known as. And there is a P also, that is people. So now when I say people, what do we mean by that? We are here to create a robust and very healthy network of the community that can leverage from each other's uh, capabilities, each other's strength and each other's business areas, business interests. We are a nonprofit organization and we are funded by the generous support of the community. We were established into 017 by the members of the Indian Punjabi community staying, residing outside India in US. We have a very strict policy in place that is no religion, no politics, and we are a non-partisan, non-political and non-religious organization. We stand by that, we practice that. And that's the only mantra that we follow. Why we really believe in creating a diversity. That is the core ethos that we follow as, a, as an organization, as a community. We are across, we are present across many continents. We have 17 chapters. We are present in India. We are present in USA. We are present in Canada. We are present in Middle East. We are present in UK and we are present in Australia. And we have 17 chapters, strong chapters that are uh, going and moving uh, by, by engaging with the community and by serving the community. Hence, I request all those who are really interested in joining us to create a strong network of uh, businesses, strong network of cooperation, so that we can leverage from each other's strength and capabilities, and we are able to give something to the uh, future generation that we uh, look forward to nurture and that we look forward to build. Thank you so much. With this, I would really uh, like to invite our chair, Networking Committee, Mr. Vivek Agarwal, Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. As uh, I would like to also share with you that we have 10 committees to, to support, to help us, strengthen us in our day-to-day -day work and in our strategic activities that we carry out. Vivek ji also holds a position uh, in the board of uh, director and he is also the co-chair of Delhi chapter, which is one of the lead chapters in the Indian context. Vivek Ji is a seasoned lawyer and he's been practicing for over 15 years. He runs a very successful law firm in India. And as you can see, he has uh, uh, specialized, I mean, he, he's an expert in the various areas of laws that are mentioned in the slide itself. And, uh, he, and he's a passionate, passionate, passionate member of the, uh, the Punjabi Chamber of Community. I welcome Vivek Ji to share his thoughts. Thank you, Vivek Ji. Can I have you? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shri Ram. It was really great, you know, to by you introducing me. See, I welcome each and everyone who's present here. And I would obviously tell everybody that I also joined a member. So what I have got from PCC, you all can get that. In six months of time, I've got a great ne network across the globe. I've got, I've got families now in PCC. I've got friends in PCC and no enemies. Because everybody, you know, you speak to 
has so much of warmth gives so much of love and respect and the best part is you have like minded people in pcc and during this covid times i've got in touch with so many people whose families were in delhi we tried helping them and few of my friends who needed help across the globe and it is just a message you read out reach out to a member and 10 replying to your message so that is what the strength of pcc is and that is why i love you know chairing the networking committee so the members present here please come forward and be a part of the committees you have to lead your own way pcc can only hold your hand at the first instance and then you have to climb your ladder on your own so i am a living example to that thank you so very much kaviraj for being here and guide us and you know the audience for your wonderful your wonderful ideas and i thank harpreet ma'am kashri ma'am jinya ma'am and vinita ma'am to put up this event for the networking thank you so very much so i would like to give the as to harpreet and dhawa ma'am to talk more about it thank you ma'am thank you vinith uh, i think my introduction is there on the slide but uh, just to reiterate i am a co chair of mumbai and i am also part of the board of director and really very passionate about uh, punjabi chamber of commerce it's this this place is this community is very close to my heart so you know i am always there for this community thank you very much uh before we formally move into the uh, uh, session with kavi raj uh, i would i would like to uh, say a few things to the participants who are watching us kindly switch on your cameras it's great to communicate and please keep typing in to the chat box we would love to communicate with you uh, i would also invite you to ask your questions uh, to kaviraj uh, while during uh, he has finished his conversation and just a little introduction of kaviraj because words will not be enough when i introduce him uh, kaviraj is a founder of stride leadership he is a certified leadership coach and associate certified coach with icf kaviraj's greatest passion is in developing world class leaders he will be celebrating his 10th year in coaching industry congratulations kaviraj from a young age kaviraj knew that he wanted to inspire others as a captain of his sports team he became passionate about leading by an example Kaviraj specializes in empowering individuals, executives, high potential and emerging leaders to perform at their very best. Today, through meaningful conversations and result-driven practices, Kaviraj is committed to helping his clients hit benchmarks both personally and professionally. He strongly believes that we are all leaders and with unbiased inspiration. we can we can all be more dynamic aligned versions of ourselves that are better equipped to lead those under our wings combining his empathetic methodology with an inherent enthusiasm for human engagement he is a perfect positioned individual or a professional to help you step into your power and realize your goals i think um, i've covered every aspect of you uh, kaviraj Thank now you. Thank I you. <laughs> I would now welcome you uh, with an opening questions, of course, uh, which would lead you to you know uh, open up your conversation with our participants. So, how would you explain self leadership or self seva? Over to you, Kaviraj. Thank you. Um, the first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, very humbled to to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, those of you in the Western world, good evening, and those of you in India, I'll be joining you there soon. As soon as the universe allows for that to happen, I big good morning to all of you. I am, um, yeah, I'm I'm thrilled at the opportunity to come and spend some time with all of you. And uh, the goal for me today is to leave you with something tangible that you can go away with, 
and work on. So um, I think many of you that have registered have had a, a couple of exercises shared with you. So we'll spend the back half of uh, my time today working on that exercise and preparing you, giving you an opportunity to, uh, to spend some time on the exercise and um, help in this, you know, in this conversation about self-leadership and the importance of it. So self seva as as the talk has been uh, has been titled um, the importance of self seva what does that mean look culturally uh, i can tell you that one of the things that i've truly enjoyed in um, that's funny that's my mom hey mom can you press mute on your uh, ipad thank you <laughs> Uh, is that uh, in my work over the last 10 years, one of the things I really aspired toward was the opportunity to work within my community. Um, why? Because I think there's tremendous opportunity. I think there's tremendous opportunity for us as a community to take, um, to take better care of ourselves, simply put. Now, the concept of seva, being in service of those around you, your family, your colleagues, your, your greater community. One of the things that, although Canadian born, makes me tremendously proud to be of Punjabi descent. I spent lots of time in Punjab, lots of time in India. And my wife, who is not of Indian descent, she's Persian. One thing she always reminds me of is how great it is to be a part of our greater community. Um, and she's often humbled by the inclusivity and the inclusion and just people willing to sort of show up for her in a way that um, is selfless. Um, and it's still for her, I think, in moments uh, uncomfortable and somewhat shocking um, that we are who we are as a people. Because that is true, um, what is also important for us within our seva is to be mindful of ourselves. I believe there's a gap there. So what I'm not going to do today is bore you and inundate you with statistics and, you know, uh, research findings. I'm just going to share my own lived experience. And my experience has been in the last couple of years, I've done my best to focus as much of my time as possible working with within our community. And I've been very lucky to have met uh, a good number of people that I've been able to candidly ask questions about, hey, how do you take care of yourself? What are you doing when you're not with your family? Maybe you have a big role professionally. Maybe you lead a team. Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're both of those things like I am. Um, I am... Uh, yes. So within all of these roles, the importance of prioritizing our own needs and what it is that we need to regenerate energy, to do restorative, act restorative activities that help us show up more effectively in the roles that we play day to day. The professional, the parent, the spouse, the family member, the friend, all of that requires us in order for us to show up as our best self requires us to prioritize us. So the buzzword there might be being selfish. And I know when I say that, that lands uncomfortably on most. Uh, but the truth is you're allowed to be selfish within your pursuits because it nets out positively for those around you. So when I tell my wife that I am going to not watch a movie with her because you know what, I'm gonna go do some yoga. I'm gonna go spend 30 or 45 minutes doing a nice stretch, maybe some breathing. What she knows now is that when I return to show up back to, to hang out with her later in the evening, that I'm just a better version of myself. I'm more centered and more aligned because I've been willing to be selfish with, with, with my own priorities and needs. Easier said than done, some might say, uh, how do I, you know, so if the idea is that I need to focus on myself before I focus on anybody else's needs, um, sure, in theory, that sounds all right. What do I do about that? Where's the starting line? Where do I get started? What can I do starting today? Um, we're going to spend some time on that. The exercises that I've shared with you are going to focus exactly on that. It's going to give you an opportunity to get to the starting line and to start to possibly implement things maybe as soon as today um, in effort to, again, to regenerate energy, lost energy, um, yeah, and, and show up as a, as, a, as, a, as a more ideal version of yourself. Pandemic, tough time. So lots of us um, in, in North America, of course, globally, uh, we've been asked to stay at home. Many of us have been working from home for over a year now. Um, 
that's not easy. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're not engaging as much with people in our community. We're not out uh, maybe spending as much time in public, um, some of which some of which some of the activities that many of you may find as being restorative activities or, or things that are considered to be um, sort of self-centered type activities, ones that you look forward to doing. Um, so there is even a, 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 a greater call to action for us to identify, you know, what, what those opportunities are and what those things are. Um, one of the misconceptions I think it's important to share uh, around self-care or self-seva is that I need a disproportionate amount of time to do that. So in order for me to be able to spend time on myself, I'm going to have to find big chunks of my day to do that. I'll tell you, I'm no exception to that. There's times that I think to myself, oh, it's time for me to self-care but I have to find a retreat or maybe I have to go for a massage or maybe I have to go to, you know, book a, you know, book a hotel for a couple of nights and just get away. Um, it doesn't always require that. Although those things are nice when, when opportunity presents itself, the reality is those times uh, or those activities, particularly in today's day and age um, are not as available. And I can tell you as a father of a three-year-old and a five-year-old and a husband and an owner of a, you know, a founder of a, of a business, it's incredibly challenging. So I'd like to, you know, to, 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 to share the idea or the, you know, the thought that it doesn't necessarily, you know, self-care and self save doesn't necessarily require us to spend big chunks of our day. I can tell you now that if we were to pause the call right now and we were to breathe together for two minutes in silence, a very brief meditation, that would be an effective way of restoring energy. That would absolutely be a version of self-care. So um, yes, please keep writing your questions, everyone. Um, uh, anybody that has questions for me will definitely jump back to them towards the end of the call. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, a thought that I think is important for, for us to understand tonight. So I would encourage you to accept, which is, Hey, it doesn't take everything. It doesn't take hours. Sometimes we just have minutes. One of the things that I do, uh, is we're very lucky to have a basketball hoop in front of the home. So between my calls, I typically leave 30 or 45 minute gaps between my calls. I'll step outside and I'll go and shoot some baskets. Why? Because I love it because it's good for me because I enjoy being outside, because I grew up as an athlete and I enjoy engaging in activities that are physical. I get fresh air. When I return to my work, I'm a better version of me. Uh, I truly am. So yes, what do we discuss next? What do I want to share? Um, permission. So one of the things within my work uh, that I've found, particularly within our community, so the Indian community, maybe the Punjabi community specifically, is there is a there's a challenge with us empowering ourselves or giving ourselves permission to in fact go out and go for the walk or ride our bike or go have a coffee with a friend or meditate for 15 minutes it does require permission it does require you to believe that you are worthy of taking that time to yourself easier said than done I accept, uh, but I'm going to be the stranger from the other side of the pond that is going to give you that permission. I'm going to encourage you to say, have the dialogue with yourself that says, I'm allowed to do X. I'm allowed to do this activity. I'm allowed to take my time and prioritize my own needs. Uh, that's imperative. If that's not in place, if you haven't given yourself permission, um, the likelihood of you taking steps toward, um, you know, deeper alignment within yourself uh, is very unlikely. So permission, very important. What do we do? Uh, so, you know, what are, what is one of the steps that I can take? What is a tangible step? Well, I'm going to share with you my screen um, in hopes that I believe most of you have actually seen this exercise or it's been sent to you. If it hasn't been sent to you, please connect with either myself uh, or Harpreet or anybody else on, um, you know, on the leadership board um, and ask for it. And we will make sure we get a copy for you. So if you don't have the exercise, please take a couple of notes here for some basic instructions. Uh, and I think you'll find, uh, I think you'll find the exercise enjoyable. So I am going to share my screen. 
what what I sent to you, uh, what you should have now is an exercise called a values exploration exercise. Recording it. The values exploration exercise is it's a benchmarking tool. So this is an activity and exercise that I run myself and I also use with those that I work with and some people in my family as well um, periodically. So, you know, the suggestion would be quarterly. And you'll understand why that's important once I once I explain the exercise itself. Um, this is not an assessment tool. I think it's important for us to, to understand that. I think people get uncomfortable around being assessed. And you know, this is not designed for you know for 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 me or anybody else to understand who you are. This is for you. This is this is absolutely a self-save piece, which is to take yourself away from, from everything around you, get focused, get present, and sit down with this exercise and do the following. You're going to categorize 52 unique values into one of three categories. The first category, and the one that's most commonly understood, is a core value. A core value, are there are non-negotiables, the things that are of the utmost importance to us core value or non-negotiables. The second one is called an aspirational value. <coughs> Excuse me. An aspirational value is something that holds important to us, but we're not quite there yet. We know it's going to take, it is likely to take shape as time goes on. So it's off in the distance. It's important to us, maybe buying a home, maybe financial security. It's important to us today and we are taking steps to get there, but we've yet fully achieved sort of, uh, we've yet to fully immerse ourselves into the particular value. Things that are important to us in the future, aspirational value. Core value, the things of the utmost importance to us today. What is our top priority? What are our non-negotiables today? Core value, aspirational value. What is it that we're looking for at some point down the line? What would we like to have closer to us? Aspirational. The third one is a non-value somewhat self-explanatory, but a non-value, not interested, doesn't apply to me, not at this stage in my life. It could be something that, um, um, yeah, that has lost value over time, or it's just a value that is just not interesting for you at all, non-value. There they are, three values. First value, again, core value, the things of the utmost importance. What is it that's most important to us today? Our non-negotiables core value. What do we want in the future? What is important to us, but we're still working toward our aspirational values? And the third, what can we sort of get rid of? What, what can we do without our non-values? Core value, aspirational value, non-value. Those are the three values. Here's the work. I'm going to ask you to go through the 52 unique values. And in the box on the right-hand side, We'll ask you to drop either a C for core, an A for aspirational, or an N for non. I'm gonna do an example. Let's go with inner peace. Maintaining a sense of inner peace or balance regardless of external events or circumstances. Structuring your life so as to honor and protect your sense of peace or balance, being at peace with yourself. For me, this is a core value. So very quickly, after I read this definition, of course, I have experience with the exercise, so it's unique for me or different for me than it will be for you. But immediately, I read that and I think, ah, that's core to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a C in the inner piece box. I'm going to find an aspirational value for myself. <laughs> Independence. I told you I was a father of a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So independence is not something right now that is present uh, as much as I would like it to be in my life, but it's definitely something that in time I'd like to reacquire. Uh, so independence, freedom to direct your own work efforts with little or no supervision, happy and able to work on your own. Here's the big one for me, seeking opportunities to do your own thing. Um, so definitely aspirational for me. Um, let me find a non-value. So 
significance. So being recognized by others, coworkers, managers, family, or friends for your abilities, accomplishments, or contribution, feeling important and valued. At this point in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to have found a place where I can self-validate and I can sort of have that conversation with myself around, you know, maybe ego or sort of, you know, uh, uh, self-acceptance possibly. And so therefore, it is, it is really not important to me that I hear it externally. Um, so I would qualify that as being a non-value. I'm gonna jump into the questions really quick because if anybody has any at this point, I'm hoping that the questions are in the box. Bum, bum, bum. So Punkage says, please share the, um, the PDF. Vinita, thank you for that. You've broken down the three different types of values. That's fantastic. Anybody else into the chat box if there's anything that you're curious about to this point about the exercise? Five, four, no, one's typing. Three, two, one. Okay, moving forward. So I guess relatively self-explanatory. Once you've grouped all the values, we head back to the first page. On the first page, you'll see two boxes, left side, right side. Here's the ask. Once you've grouped the values beneath, I'm gonna ask you to extract your top five core and aspirational values in no particular order, but undoubtedly, unequivocally, the five that resonate the most with you, the five that you would like to step back and say, yes, these are the things that make me who I am right now. I'm gonna ask you to plug those five, again, in no particular order, into the box on the left. And just a very quick note to yourself as to why it is important to you. Why does it end up in, in, in this, in this um, top five? Same thing on the right side, but with non-values. Back through the list you go, you may not have five core values, or you may not have five non-values, and that would be okay. Just go ahead and list what you have. If you have more than five, again, pick the five that are least important to you, the ones that you would really like to just sort of exit out of your life, and let's go ahead and populate those on the right-hand side. And again, a very quick note on why it's a non-value. What would I like to share with you uh, about doing the exercise itself? Do it in a peaceful place. Find a place that is not your workplace. That's a requirement. This is what I ask of all clients. So print it off. If you can print off the PDF and have a, a hard paper copy, that would be ideal. Um, find a place that's relaxing for you. Maybe it's outside. Maybe it's on a park bench. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it's in your den. Maybe it's on your couch find a place where you feel that you have um, that you have an opportunity to focus um, that uh, what else is important so print it off find a location that is peaceful for you oh no need to rush through the exercise so please take your time with it um, it doesn't need to be done in a certain period of time if you decide that you're going to do a handful of them and then you end up with some type of a brain cramp where you say ah I, this isn't the right time for me to finish this don't judge yourself Put it down, step away, revisit it the next time you think you're ready for it. Pick it up later in the same day, pick it up tomorrow. Um, so print it off, give yourself space and, um, and take your time. Lastly, and most importantly, I say this knowing that it is likely to surface for most of us, at least that's the feedback that I've received, is there's uh, likely gonna be a part of this where you feel as if you are judging yourself. My ask, is that you're kind to yourself. Uh, I'll share one that always kicks me in the butt. Uh, and that is what? physicality, where is it? Physicality, seeking opportunities for exercise or participation in sports or any other physical pursuits, making physical activity a priority in your schedule. I'm still aspirational. And every time I sit down with it, I say, ah, not there yet, but I do know it's an opportunity for me to continue pushing in the direction where I can make it core. What will it look like when it's core for me? How will I know that it's core? Because I'm going to be prioritizing physicality over other events in my life. Maybe it's in my calendar. Maybe I've joined a men's football club. Maybe I'm going swimming. That's when I will know that I'm fully immersed into that value and it has become core. So be kind to yourself. That's a big ask. 
that's it. That is it uh, for this particular exercise. Again, there are some uh, there are some condensed uh, instructions at the top of the page. Um, and if you have questions, by all means, reach out. I'm more than happy to take your inquiries and walk you through it if you're looking for more information. Just going to open the chat very quickly. We have a participant asking us a question. Uh, so Navinder, if you're there and you would want to switch on your camera and ask the question or your comment uh, to Kaviraj, you're most welcome. Yes, uh, Kaviraj, I think I just put in a chat. Uh, uh, the question is that uh, in case uh, you have to do this exercise, you should be very honest with yourself. So how to get to that level of honesty? And secondly, if you discard something as non-value, doesn't it get hardwired inside you and you may not accept it as a requirement later when you need it? I appreciate the question. This is Navinder. Yeah, Navinder. Yes, he's Navinder. Awesome. Navinder, I can't, sorry, I can't see your, uh, your video, but thank you for the question. Um, here's the good news, Navinder. Nobody else is going to see this. We're not going to share it with anybody, right? So this is, this is you know, this is, this is work for you right? Uh, again, it's not an assessment. So my encouragement for you is, oh, there you are. Fantastic. Oh, that's a great beach you have in the background, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's my core and aspirational boat, which I did this year with my daughter. I went skiing to Gulmarg. Ah, fantastic. Fantastic. So the, um, again, it's a great question. So the answer for me really, Navinderji, is to, um, <laughs> to free yourself of the judgment piece. Uh, and again, remind yourself that this is a benchmarking exercise. Values are meant to shift. That was an important piece that I, I failed to share. Values are meant to shift over time. Of course, they're going to be a particular set of values, which are going to stay very close to us and likely core over, over a lifetime. But the other 80%, if we apply the 80-20 rule, they will have movement over time. You may be surprised to know that they could have movement in as little time as a quarter, right? In, in three months time. Um, so again, the encouragement would be in that time where you're sitting with yourself and you say, ah, this is tough to be brutally honest. Remember that there is an opportunity to evolve. The awareness piece is, is, is I would argue the most important part of the work is just to build that understanding within yourself. And from there, we get to have fun. If there's something there for you that's aspirational, much like me with physicality, well, okay, Kaviraj, it's time to get to work, man. Let's go. <laughs> you know, what, what can you do? What does the question I ask myself often, Narendra, is uh, Navinder, is what is it? What does 10% more look like for me? So rather than having to conquer the entire thing at once, what does one or two notches more look like for me? Maybe I add 10 minutes to my walk, right? Maybe I do two more minutes of breathing. That's all. Important to keep the personal bar low. We don't say this publicly because we would feel shameful to do that. But here, we're allowed to keep our personal bar low. My coach tells me, keep your bar so low that you trip over it. As a proud Punjabi, I say, how dare you say it? How dare you tell me that I shouldn't be outperforming and bumping my head on the bar every day? He says, no, no, it happens gradually. Be kind to yourself, take little steps. <laughs> I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Kaviraj. Absolutely. You're very welcome. Kaviraj, uh, Vinita has a question. Please. So, Vinita, would you want to ask a question? Okay, so um, uh, how to let go of working mom guilt? So, a small ah. example. So, whenever there's a long call going on and my daughter comes in between and says, plays with me. So, I have a heart melt moment that time and I just want to leave everything and go play with her. So how do you um, manage that? Find different work. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is a reflection of values, Nitha. Right? This is a perfect example of a core value of yours. In all likelihood, family is going to be a core value. Connection with your daughter is core to you. So in those moments, how do you rid yourself of the guilt? Ah, the bad news is you can't. The good news is I hope you feel encouraged to optimize on your time with your daughter when you have that opportunity. So I'll speak from personal experience, um, being a dad, I wish I could pull my wife into the conversation to, to add some pieces to this. She's also a certified coach, um, is uh, 
there are times when I'm with my boys um, and I feel very pulled away from things that are more important to me when in fact I know there is nothing more important to me. What you just described, Benita, has actually been a fantastic reflection for me in asking myself from a very deep place what matters the most. So that for you is a very loud and clear sign that your daughter is, she's, she's a huge part of your core values, right? She's a huge part of, of why it is that you do what you do. She will get it in time. She'll understand it. You know, that, that's, that's, that's what I remind myself of often is that uh, even the work that you are doing is for her, no? Yeah. <laughs> how, how so very well explained Kaviraj. Uh, just to add on, uh, you know, it, it's always time for everyone to cut that umbilical cord uh, well in time, you know, that helps. Uh, but then, you know, Kavi, I have a small question from you. For you, actually, uh, you you touched upon the Punjabi in uh, in thing that we all have, you know. So seva is an integral part of a Punjabi community. We would love to hear your views about that. On seva uh, within our community, ah, it's quite possibly the thing that I am I am I'm most deeply proud of in our community, and I hold back my emotion as I say that because it's. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I love this part of, of who it is that we are um, as a people. I believe our seva transcends race, gender, um, you know, nationality, um, religion. Uh, I believe that we are, and there's a number of examples of that, even here locally where I am within our community, we are the first ones to put our hands up. We are the first ones to help, to be in service of our neighbor, independent of, of what their background is or where they come from. We feed people. My mom, I always joke, she's always taking food to the neighbors, right? She's always taking dorte or subji or things that she has at home. She says, oh, they love it. I want to take it. There's no expectation of return. We don't, we don't ask for anything back. Um, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I I'm going to park it there because there's, <laughs> there's so many other places I would love to go with the conversation, but yeah. Yes, I do understand. So uh, if, if uh, we can move further with what you have to share, otherwise I have a couple of questions lined up for you. Fantastic. There's a follow-up exercise to the first values exploration exercise, and that one is called, here it comes. It's called values driven goal design. So in the next stage of the values work that I do with clients, and this is typically stretched over about a two or three week period. Um, so please take your time with it is I'll ask you to take the, the top five core and aspirational values that you had in the first exercise. And I'm going to ask you to plug those across the top here. So in the value boxes, one through five. So quite simply taking those five from the first exercise and plugging them across the top. Beneath each value, you have five more boxes that are identified as being focus area one through five. In that focus area box, what I'm gonna ask you to do, and this is gonna be much more challenging than it likely sounds off the hop, is I'm gonna ask you to find five specific activities or actions that you can take that will align you within that value. Let me use a quick example. So if I have, which I do, um, physicality as one of my, one of my, you know, my highest priority values in the first box, I would say in focus area one, to be specific, I would say 45 minutes of yoga practice four times a week. That's realistic for me. It's tangible, it's measurable. That's what I'm gonna drop into the first box. The next box, quite simply, I can say, I'm gonna ride 30 kilometers this week on my bike. I have a tracker, I have an app that will tell me how, you know, how far I've traveled. I have the bike at home. That's realistic, I can do that. Number three, I am going to, what am I gonna do for physicality? I am going to, I'm gonna to go to the track. Very blessed to have a beautiful um, athletics facility not far from home. And I'm going to, I'm going to aim for, what's realistic? Four miles of jogging slash running a week. One, two, three, 
they came to me pretty quickly. Now when I get to four and five, I have to get creative. I have to get aspirational. I have to ask myself, hey, what are the things that I've thought about doing? What is that, you know, what is that activity? And I think to myself, ah, I've wanted to hike for quite some time. I actually live on a mountain. I live in a hill station. And so there's beautiful world-class trails all around me. But I haven't taken action on those trails. I've lived here for nearly four years. Actually, it's been four years now. So that would be a focus area for me. So I'm going to drop that in there. And I'm going to hold my bar very low. And I'm going to say twice this month or twice in the next 30 days, I'm going to attempt to do a trail walk or a hike on the mountain. Does that make sense? I know you can't answer me. Um, that's it. Um, what I actually will do is I'm going to do a follow-up email or communication uh, that somebody from the committee will be able to share with you that'll help further kind of immerse you into this particular exercise. This one won't come with a set of um, instructions, um, but yes, I will leave my door open for those of you that complete the first exercise and really want to sort of, you know, pull yourself into this second one. Um, I'd be happy to work with you on, uh, on completing all 25 boxes. Uh, at the end of this exercise, what you have is 25 activities, which will engage you in your own defined values. Thank That's you. Great. You're very welcome. Great. Uh, I have a question from Rashri. Yes. Uh, would you ask would you want to ask a question you need to unmute yourself yes yes i think my question is almost pretty much uh, answered by him i just wanted to understand from kaviraj kaviraj a we have the core values i think our most of our core values they always remain with us because you know this is a very first instant and that's how we define ourselves by those values now, when we talk about aspirational, aspirational values are to be realized. Uh, for example, you want to spend some time on the, on the physicality part of it, or perhaps uh, doing some warm up or exercise. So that's yeah. aspirational. Once you start doing that, then the, the value will be sort of uh, broken into, uh, you know, uh, step one, step two, step three, step four, because then you start getting into that. So it becomes over a period of a period of time that uh, the particular term of you know doing some exercise it becomes more a core, right? So a and there is no end to these aspirational values. Correct. So it's like, it's like a lot of stress to be honest. Mm. How do we do that? Uh, you know, self uh, sort of. Uh, I mean, I'll be stressed out as a person. I'll be stressed out. A and. Also, uh, like to again reiterate with what Navinda Ji has uh, suggested, the non the non values they may become aspirational at some point. They may not become core because we are not prioritizing them. If we are not prioritizing them now, they may not become our core value at all. But sure. they may become our aspiration at some point. So how do we negotiate? It's like too much of stress. I completely understand that by the end of uh, it's twenty five boxes that we are in. Sure. We are all sorted. But I appreciate that. Yeah. It's a great question. If I understand, I mean, we could spend a full day talking about this. Um, you know, it's it's a great question. Look at the root of this. It's um, <laughs> being kind to yourself, understanding that what we are doing here is building an awareness. So that second particular exercise that has twenty five boxes, it's not an accountability tool, right? So I think the lens through which we approach the work and sort of the paradigm through which we approach, you know, the exercise or identifying um, is imperative, right? So I use this with, uh, with myself and then with those that I work with, the encouragement is, hey, look, we're just taking a bit of a deep dive that most people won't take into building an awareness around what is it that I'm after? What is it that's working well for me now? What do I really truly enjoy? Um, Thanks for asking the question. I would love to spend a bit of time with you if, if you do go through the exercise on talking to you a bit of one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on sort of what that looks like for you. Um, but you bring up a great point. My immediate sort of knee-jerk encouragement would be to not hold yourself to any particular standard. We're just, ex we're just exploring in these first couple of exercises as it relates to the implementation my expectation of myself, nor would it ever be of you or anybody else, would be to start getting busy on all 25 of those things. It just becomes 
oh, I should have mine here. No, I just cleaned my desk. Um, but typically I would have it somewhere close to me where if I'm having a particular, you know, period of my day where I just know I need to remove a little bit, I'll just glance over and say, okay, what do I need to tap into? And off I go. I find the thing that I have time to do and off I go. But important that I don't hold myself to any particular standard. Does that make sense? Great. Yes. I, I, I do this. I have a couple of athletes that are just preparing to leave for the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, and I'm not sure if you could sort of, you know, intuitively uh, imagine how it is that they would take something like this on as a high performing athlete, which is, I have to do it. It's here. Let's go. It's performance, 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 performance. And so I have some uh, very interesting conversations with them around slowing the pace down. Again, all we're looking to do is build some awareness around where we are at, because only then can we effectively proceed. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, great. Yes. All right. Uh, the last yeah, question you. to you, Kaviraj. Uh, then, you know, we'll be moving on to the breakout room. But before that, I have a question. How can self-leadership or self-seva be taught in the middle school and high school students so that we have self-motivated leaders for the future generation. Wow, that is a big, fantastic question. How do we do it within middle schools? Ah. Because what, what we have understood is the aspirational and the core, and it's very tender age, you know? Uh, they're still into that phase. So what would you suggest? It's a gradual thing that could be uh, done or we, we train the teachers to do it or how does it happen? Wow, so I turned 40 in January and I can tell you the idea of self-leadership came into my life about six or seven years ago uh, and I have no aspirations of mastering it because I, I don't believe it's true to be able to master it. Uh, so I'm still learning myself. I think, you know, um, what is the opportunity at a young age? I think as parents or as educators, uh, exposing children to um, huh. uh, this this could go a number of different directions. What would be uh, oh Harpreet, you've uh, you've stumped me. No, actually, to be very honest, I'm a teacher, so you know it's always I'm I'm working very closely. So this was a very personal question, and I thought I could just you know. Uh, you, ask you and take some insights because it's learning. It's a fantastic question. I will catch you offline after I have some time to absorb the question. <laughs> I appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. I'll keep bothering you with that. Uh, now I'm getting a signal that, you know, we need to move out to our breakout rooms. But before I do that, you know, I want to really uh, thank you, uh, Kaviraj, but before I do that, I, I, as a chair of membership uh, committee of PCC, I would want to highlight on uh, the uh, six aspects of our Punjabi Chamber of Commerce, which is the voice. Very important for all of us to advocate on your behalf. You, it's a platform where you can come and talk about what you do, how you do, whom you want to network with, the second, as I mentioned, it moves on to the networking. You have all kinds of people uh, uh, you, from professionals to philanthropists to you know, entrepreneurs to gel with and to grow yourselves professionally and personally. Uh, of course, there are uh, tie-ups within the community with the entrepreneurs. They are offering great discounts for the services they offer. Uh, but uh, of course, you know, we all have to go monetarily. So it, it, there is a cost to it, but at a reduction, a reduced prices. Of course, we all get uh, a place to grow where we can write about ourselves, uh, read about uh, people who are doing great job into the community and otherwise outside, be part of great events that are happening. Uh, also, there is a great opportunity to give back to the society which is the third circle of our being, us. Uh, the last but not the least is that you stand out and you get visibility on the global platform. And I've been very lucky to have that. So I, I am a great propagator of that. Thank you very much, PCC. Um, we would love people to become members and help us grow as large as a community that we can. Uh, you could log into our website, punjabichamber.com, register yourselves as members, and you know it'll be great to see you on many more forthcoming events. 
last but not the least, I would like to thank uh, Kaviraj for spending a uh, lovely time with us. It has given uh, people back in India a great start to the day. And everyone on the other side of the globe who are ending their day you know, in a very productive manner. And they can actually feel uh, they've, they've learned something and they have something to do the next day. Uh, of course, you highlighted that the pandemic has not been easy for each one of us, but with self-seva and self-leadership, we shall be doing and moving, uh, you know, and growing ourselves in times to come. Of course, being productive to the society and to ourselves. The tools and the exercises that you have shared with us, of course, have left us, you know, doing self-introspection uh, personally and on our professional fronts. Uh, last but not the least, to the administrative team of PCC. Guys, you've been wonderful in supporting uh, myself personally and Vivek uh, in putting up this show together for everyone globally. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Now I would request uh, Genia to help us get into our breakout rooms and have a nice networking uh, amongst ourselves. Thank you all very much. Have a very nice morning. So uh, I have uh, assigned breakout rooms to everyone, so people can select and move according to the breakout rooms themselves. If you could give give a uh, you know instructions, I think many of them would not be knowing. So so, so you on your screen you'll find an option called breakout rooms. You need to select that. Uh, we would not see that. Uh, I'm not able to see, so I would not know if anybody else sees that. Even I am also not seeing the option. Rita, can you see that? No, no, it's not visible. Anybody cannot see this. I think you'll have to either make them co-host or something. It's that's when they see. No, 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 it's there and uh, already it's been assigned just a moment. Can you see now? No, not yet. Strange it's showing on my system. Wait, let me check. Can we quickly do that here, Jinya, if in case if it doesn't work? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. So how many participants do we have? 15. All right. 15. So I will, uh, uh, Kaviraj, would you want to take a lead to break ice amongst ourselves? Or can I take a lead to do that for all of us? No, please do. Please go ahead. I'm just going to refill my water. So I will. All right. You. Super. Yeah. Super. So uh, all the participants here, uh, could you, could everybody who's, uh, uh, you could actually come on a gallery view so that we can see each one of us. And it will be very easy for me to, you know, call out the name. And uh, you'll have 30 seconds to give you a little introduction, a brief one though, so that everybody knows you. So I will start with uh, Sabi Varech. If Sabi, you are hearing us, would love to see you and 30 seconds for you. Yeah, hello, my full name is Sarabjit Singh Varech. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Uh, in the United States. Uh, I full-time, I have a couple of jobs. I'm an angel investor. I'm a chief information officer at a local community college. I've been professor teaching for the last 12 years. And I'm also a speaker. So I go around and uh, speak on leadership, uh, project management, and so on. A lot of fun stuff. Great. Thank you so much. Ashwin. Ashwin, if you're there. All right, I'll move on to the next one till we get him back. Tej Beer Singh. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tej Beer Singh Sani. I'm from Chandigarh, India. Uh, I worked in corporate sector in oil and gas for 34 years. And post that, I've been a life coach. So just for last one year, I've been got my certification done and uh, you know trying to help people. So that's what I do currently. Super. Could we have Ruchika Tandon uh, introduce herself, please? 
So hello everyone. I'm Ruchika Tandon from Mumbai, and uh, I am a reinsurance specialist, and uh, have been working into the sector for the last ten years. And uh, I really enjoyed the session today. And I would like to thank uh, Kaviraj and PCC for this organizing this great session. Thank you. Super. Could we have Pankaj? Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry, I got some certain problem with the video, and I'm not able to, you know. come on in and uh, first of all thanks a lot kaviraj it was really nice session you know wake up in the morning and have a such a wonderful session it made our weekend so thanks a lot and thanks a lot uh, vivek for uh, you know having a such a great session and we hope that we have more such sessions in the coming time and uh, thanks to the all the admin team and harpreet ji as usual harpreet ji is one of the wonderful moderators <laughs> and uh, myself i am pankaj sharma and i am a chartered accountant and working into internal audit domain and i have a post qualification experience of 9 years so yeah that's it thank you great could we have navinda narang introduce himself uh yeah i am uh, kanul navinda narang i have uh, got 21 years of uh, veteran experience in the army and almost 11 years now in the corporate i am with icici home finance company as their head infrastructure and facilities uh, i'm also an entrepreneur kind of a person in a stealth mode because i'm involved with a edtech startup so looking forward to a lot of uh, you know views support uh, mentoring support kind of a thing in the edtech uh, space because i'm not a real technical kind of a person At the same time willing to help uh youngsters youth to to you know understand corporate better and maybe uh i i'm 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 quite uh, uh, good at helping them with their cvs and resumes so any work that pcc may have in this department i'm i'm welcome thank you uh, could we have uh, balwinder's ipad this is what i read on my screen so ma'am if you would want to introduce yourself you've been there since the beginning so You're on mute still. This is my mom, everybody. Oh, how nice it is! I <laughs> okay. Mom, say hi. Unmute yourself. Hit the mute button. Oh, hi there. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We would love to hear from you, ma'am. Yes, I am uh, Kaviraj Sal's mom. <laughs> Great, and I think I asked the right question when I asked about how to inculcate self-save. So I think you're the right person. Uh, oh, yeah, probably yeah. would have driven that. <laughs> yeah, Kavi, as Kavi was saying, uh, I, I'm also very proud of our community. We are, you know, anytime there's a need for help, without any religion. anything we are all, we're there to help so Great. super ma'am lovely lovely having you with us could Thank i request uh, a participant here the name says iphone so uh, if you could identify yourself and we would love to interact all right i'll move on to the next one if ashwin is back we could quickly okay he's not there Uh, NPS Hiraji, if yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. All oh, right, great, super. Yeah, so yes, sorry, Mister Paul. You want an introduction, right? Is that it? Yes, introduction. Thirty okay. seconds for you. Okay, great. So, um, so I'm an uh, executive coach uh, and and uh, HR consultant. I have my own practice for the name of Human Network. and uh, we do some work uh, on leadership coaching and so on and so forth so i'm based out of bombay india and um, i'm looking forward to uh, working with the community and contributing whatever i have thank you so much look forward thank you so much uh, ashwin uh, hira ji over to you hello everyone i am nirmal preet singh hira i'm from amritsar and i'm advocate by profession it's really nice to see everyone over here thank you that's it welcome i think each one of us now knows uh, you know uh, about a little about each other it will be great to be connected here onwards 
Uh, anyone, uh, you can talk about PCC, Ashwin, and all, all new people who have just joined us, just talk about it. It's a great community to be part of. Uh, one small exercise before we step out, just type into the chat box what you are seeking. What are you seeking from PCC? So maybe a word into the chat box, please. Let's make it active. All right, here we go. Quick, 15 seconds, one word. What are you seeking? Support, networking, community, legacy of learning, super networking, bigger family, learning. It, it's, it's all, it also resonates. We are here for the same cause. I thank you all very much for your time and uh, a very well spent time today morning. Thank you all very much. And uh, Genia, however you would want to take this and close this, so like Rashi, I leave that to you. I like to yeah. <laughs> So I'm so thankful yes, to yes. Abhiraj and everybody here, being the cheer networking as everybody of you addressed. So we look forward to have Sabi, Navinder ji, you know, Ashwin ji, Tejbir ji, come forward and, you know, have associates with us, you know, with the networking. And then since you are the life coaches, we can have you with us and, you know, plan programs so the audience benefits from your experiences as well. So we'll, the networking committee would get in touch with each one of you and take things forward because we would like to, you know, share your experiences with each one of all so that we benefit. So we'll take the lead from here. And thank you so much, Kaviraj, for making this a success. Over to you, Jinia, ma'am. Thank you so much. Rajeshri, you want to say a few yes. words? Yeah. Yes, yes. First of all, thank you so much, Kaviraj. It was a wonderful session and eye-opening and first of all, you know, that the fact that we really need to go slow in today's world, we need to go slow. We have to be kind to ourselves, which we have, we have almost forgotten. And somebody coming in the morning on a weekend and tells me to slow down and I'm just taking it. So it was wonderful to have you and we look forward to having such uh, some more uh, sessions with you, not only as part of our uh, networking meet or membership drive, we would also love to hear from you as our, uh, as part of our leadership series or just take it forward from here. Thank you so much. And I thank all of you who have been able to take uh, your time out and joining us. And uh, it's really nice to know you more new people on board and uh, i thought as a as a signing off it is important that while we uh, take all your input Harpitji, thank you so much for moderating it so well and taking a lead in you know in the, in the in engaging with the members wonderful and vivekji the kind of passionate person that he is so thank you vivekji and thank you Harpitji, for supporting us in this entire initiative we have one more uh, global meet and greet and meet happening on 26th of uh, june uh, the time and uh, other details are already shared and we will be sharing again and uh, this is just uh, as a signing off i thought these are a few slides that we could just run uh, quickly through them so as I had uh, at the onset itself, so I'm the executive director of Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. At the onset itself, we talked about five, four Cs. There are many Cs here, commerce, cooperation, culture, creativity, community, and communications, and uh, capacity building. We try and build the capacity. Today, our capacity was built. We would like to have, we, we would like to become a better version of ourselves. So these kind of capacity building exercises that we keep trying, uh, keep doing, and we would also encourage all our network members, all our members to join us, help us grow, leverage on each other's strength and capability. That's what we stand for. Can I uh, move on to the next slide, Jinya? And these are few, uh, this is how uh, Punjabi Chamber of Commerce looks like. We are aptly guided by a set of trustees. We have a board of directors to guide us, support us, and we can always go back to them. There are on the left side of my screen, I can just see there are 10 committees that are, are there. The names are mentioned. We have this uh, a very strong committee, uh, committee, and these committees are headed by a chair. And also we have uh, a very strong set of members to lead these individual committees, Vivekji and uh, 
I think they are uh, the chairs of uh, networking and membership respectively. Hira ji is also part of many of these committees and uh, and so and we have a youth wing that we call Global Youth Squad. We also have a foundation and this foundation during the COVID time has really worked towards uh, getting the Austin concentrators and we are also commissioning uh, to uh, Ox uh, commissioning what? Commissioning oxygen plants in two of the hospitals in Manali and Jalandha. So the Barali work is almost on its way, but Jalandha work, uh, it's like at the final stage. We will be talking about it when we have been able to commission that. And we have 17 chapters, 17 chapters, and these chapters are led by co-chairs. Uh, Harpit Ji, again, she, she co-chairs the Mumbai chapter here, uh, who, is, who is present here. Vivek Ji is the co-chair of Delhi chapter. There are other co-chairs also. And uh, we all are part of one chapter or the other, but we are not restricted by that geography. We are perhaps empowered by that geography. We can just take uh, wherever we want to. We have to have some work in Vancouver. We have Kaviraj Sun. If we have to go to New Jersey, we have other members. We can always uh, seek each other's help and we can uh, sort of facilitate uh, that growth that we can see. And our idea is to create a legacy for the next generation so that they can feel proud of uh, the fact that they belong to a community that is all about self-seva, that is all about seva, uh, universal seva also. And these are the 17 chapters that are uh, there. So, uh, so th that's about it from my end. I think this is the last slide and Harpiji has very aptly elaborated on the benefits that one gets. There are many other things on, on, on the pipeline in, the, in terms of creating an e-badge for all the members so that the members can make use of those uh, e-badge cards for getting uh, more services or uh, discounted services from our members. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, day to you know, close, the, close the week today. Definitely a wonderful day. Thank you so much for taking your time out. Is there anything else that you would like each of you, if you want to share something with us, uh, do let us know here or wherever you want. From my end, I thank all of you. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.